So David actually left me last night. We worked together for about three days. On the way to Erbil, driving from Suleimani, he was stopped at one of the sort of checkpoints and they wouldn't let him through. Uh, it was around about midnight. He was with two drivers uh, who didn't know a word of English. Security didn't know any English. So we're going to have a word with him and see how he feels about that. Well, he didn't pick up the phone, that's pretty helpful, isn't it? This is what i got to go through in this sort of lack of digital infrastructure. Internet is just really low. Let's give him another call. All right, it's calling now. <laughs> David can't call right now. What does that mean? Let's try him again. Let's try again. David, oh, hi. Yes. yes, how are you? Oh my god. How are you? I am well, thank you. After my little bit of excitement. Yes, yeah, so we had quite a bit of an adventure last night at the uh, entrance to the Army Studio checkpoint, about 25 minutes outside of Erbil. Yeah. Essentially, what had happened is I had an early breakfast appointment, so I sort of leapt out of bed having had a fairly late night the night before and I have two British passports and I grabbed the wrong one. I can't uh, believe you did that. Uh, so you had I your know. passport with you from Suleimani driving uh, around about midnight down some of the most sort of dangerous roads that you can find in this region and then you reach a checkpoint and then what happens? Uh, he was looking for my visa and uh, as he turned each page my heart sank a little more. Look, the problem is I didn't know that I needed a stamp. It's not my old passport. Both passports are current and valid. Okay. I'm allowed two British passports because I'm a journalist. I see. I didn't think it made any difference. Right, and right. I didn't actually know that, that, that this happened. So the stamp wasn't in the passport. We got out. And obviously this was all very complicated for me because I didn't understand what was going on. Guy kept going, he wants your other passport. He wants your other passport. And I was going, I don't have my other passport. I don't have my other passport. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then we were taken to a cabin where the head of the uh, checkpoint was. And he was just a surly individual. Right. He was like, I don't care about your sorry. I want the other passport. See, we called you up. And we concocted this plan where Jonathan would go into my room, Jonathan Spire being a fellow British journalist who's staying at the same hotel as me. He took a picture of the stamp. And I'll never forget this. We went in with a taxi driver, very nice guy, introduced me to the joys of Kurdish music. Went into his cabin and he showed him the photo and they spoke in Kurdish. His face was just, look, and I said, it's okay, it's okay. And the guy said, no, it's not okay. Oh, no. But he said, we Kurds are very friendly people. So you will go to Erbil anyway. Wow. They probably just had enough of you and was like, all right, let's just get this guy out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I have to say, when you called me, the tone of your voice was utter despair. Yeah, I was just thinking, what the hell am I going to do? Because then I'm just going to have to go back. And, you know, they're closing back that airport. I had a vision of me in five months with a really long scraggly beard sitting in an internet cafe. And thankfully I'm leaving tomorrow as they are shutting down the airport on Friday. Watch this space and as I say, I think as we were talking before, it's just the beginning of a film. I think the independence thing kicks it off. I mean, the story that's of right. the birds yeah. is, uh, is one that's good. And they're taking there and be in touch. Yeah? That'd be awesome, yeah. All right, buddy, I've got to get back to writing. All, All right, right good. All right, man, cheers. cheers Take bye. care, bye. He's had a hard time in Kurdistan. I, I think that's part and parcel with his work. His work involves, you know, uncertain political situations. It involves instability, it involves running around. It's a really risky job, so it's something that I really admire. And not just in David, uh, but for journalists in general, those who put themselves out there. The reason why I talk about this is because of, you know, the risks that people like David and other journalists that I know and all over the world who go and, and do these things that they don't even need to. They don't have to, to live their life. They could just be at home, but these people have this fire, this drive, this need to uncover the truth, to promote human rights, to document things as they happen for future generations to learn about. It's huge, it's a huge job. But anyway, like David just said, it is just the beginning of I think it's going to be really interesting and hopefully I'll be around to see some of it unfold. Cool.